Welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. I'm Noah and this is the final episode of the random dungeon generation tutorial series. So far we have an almost working system that generates a cool random dungeon but it still has a few flaws such as occasional openings leading to the infinite scene space. Our goal in this video is to fix this quirk and also put into place a system that will give our dungeon an exit room. With that said, let's begin. So first of all, I wanted to fix a little mistake I made in the previous video. This piece of code checking whether the spawned variable of the object collided with is equal to false isn't necessary and will be immediately removed. Leaving this will actually create a nasty bug where rooms will spawn on top of the entry room. With that done, let's fix the openings in our dungeon. The reason we get these openings in the first place is because two spawn points collide with each other and neither has the time to spawn a room before it is destroyed. <coughs> to fix this, all we must do is check whether what we have collided with has a spawned bool variable equal to false. If it does, and this spawn point also has a spawned variable equal to false, then we must instantiate some wall that will block off any opening. So I'll type in some comment underlining what we must do and then head over to my room template script and add a public game object variable called closed rooms. Basically a wall with the size of a room guaranteeing that the player does not escape the dungeon. Now we can simply instantiate that closed room in our room spawner script. However, when we press play, we will be faced with a problem. Indeed, our entry room gets clogged up in closed rooms. The reason for this is because the entry room spawns four rooms at the same time. And those four rooms all come with a spawn point that collide with each other at the center of the entry room. Since each spawn point has spawned equal to false, this if statement will run true and closed rooms will spawn. The easy fix to this is to add a spawn point at the middle of the entry room. Call it destroyer, remove the room spawner script attached to it and drag and drop a new script on it called destroyer. This script will be very short. It will simply destroy all game objects that collide with it. Now if we hit play, things should be working smoothly. All right, now that all rooms are being set up nicely, I wanted to point out that if you want a higher chance of a certain room spawning in your dungeon, all you need to do is drag and drop it multiple times in your arrays. Alright, with that all fixed, let's get our exit room up and running. To do so, we are going to use lists, which is basically a dynamic array. In other words, an array that can have elements be removed and added to it at runtime. What we will do is have each room spawn and be added to a room's list. The last room to be added to our list will be the exit room. So let me head over to my room template script and create a public list of type game object called rooms. I'll then create a new script called add room, drag and drop it onto every single one of my room prefabs and open it up. This script will add the spawned room to our rooms list. But first, I need to grab a reference to my room template script. So like I did in the previous video, I'll create a new private variable of type room template called templates and in my start function, set templates equal to the game object with a rooms tag and more precisely, the room template component attached to that object. And right below that line of code, I will type templates.rooms.add and in the parentheses state this dot game object. Now each room will be added to the list. We can actually test this out by selecting our room templates game object and hitting play. And you'll see that each room is added to the list. Let's now put this to good use and spawn a boss in the last room added to our list. I'll start by creating a 
public float variable in the room template script called wait time, a private bool variable called spawned boss, and a public game object named boss. In my update function, I'll then create an if statement and check whether my wait time is less or equal to zero. If it is, we will want to spawn the boss. If not, we will slowly decrease the wait time value. The reason we will wait a little before defining the exit room and spawning the boss is because we need to be sure all rooms have been spawned. Once the wait is over, however, we will create a for loop and get this loop to run as long as our ins variable i is less than the number of elements in our list. Since this is a list and not an array, we get the number of elements by using dot count and not dot length. We will now check whether i is equal to the number of elements in our list minus one. Because remember, lists start with an index of zero, like arrays, and if that statement returns true, then we will instantiate our boss at the room of index i's position. In other words, at the position of our last spawned room and with no rotation. We of course don't want bosses endlessly spawning, so I'll set spawned boss equal to true and add to my if statement up here the condition that spawned boss must be equal to false. Now the code in here will no longer run, and so extra bosses will not appear in our game. If I now type in a wait time of say 2 seconds to be on the safe side and drag and drop my simple boss sprite, I can then press play and enjoy the sight of my dungeon creating itself before my very eyes. Boss room and all. Before wrapping up the video, let's do some optimization. I'll head over to my room spawner script create a new public float variable called wait time with a default value of 4 and then in my start function destroy the game object with this script attached to it. In other words, my spawn point. After a certain amount of seconds, so wait time. This way my scene will not be cluttered with useless spawn points carrying colliders and rigid bodies that weigh down memory space and get things to lag. And that will mark the end of this video, and of the random dungeon generation mini-series. Of course, you can now expand on this simple system by figuring out ways to generate different sized rooms. Or you could simply have a packet of fun throwing your player into this dungeon, with each room spawning random monsters and items. With that said, don't hesitate to ask for help if for some unfortunate reason a bug befell you. I will come to your aid the fastest possible. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons if you enjoyed the content and don't want to miss any future in-depth game dev videos. Alright, have a great day, stay tuned, cheers!